Hello and welcome. Thank you for joining me today. My name is Louise Delise, artist and teacher. My channel contains drawing and painting videos to help you improve your own practice and hopefully inspire your own creative journey. This introduction to charcoal for absolute beginners is lesson one of a 10 part lesson series. For the next 10 weeks, I will be uploading a video every Friday specifically designed at absolute beginners to teach you all the basic fundamental principles you need to know to be able to sketch and draw effectively using charcoal. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and click notifications so that you'll be informed of future uploads. In this video we will be sketching a tree in real time so you can draw along with me. However, as this is lesson one, we will be utilising willow charcoal and a kneaded eraser. I'll introduce compressed and powdered charcoal to you, but this is in view to using them in subsequent videos as your knowledge grows and we can introduce more elements. But in other videos, we will be exploring lots of different topics from landscapes to still lives, seascapes, portraiture, pet portraiture. So let's get to it and let's have a look at what you will learn in this video, lesson one. We'll be looking at what charcoal is, how is charcoal made, and we'll be exploring the different types of charcoals that are available for artists. I'll be showing you how to make your own charcoal powder. Charcoal is often perceived to be a very messy medium. I'm going to show you how you can foil wrap your charcoal sticks to keep your hands relatively clean. We'll look at the different types of tools used with charcoal. Then we'll be moving on to the practical tasks and there are five of them in this video covering topics such as tonal graduation. We'll be practicing mark making and discover how to make interesting marks using charcoal, tonal scale and the importance of it. We'll be looking at tonal values and how to use them within your work And finally, we'll be utilising the knowledge we've gained so far to sketch a tree. And look out for my top tip in this video, which is the best and easiest way to clean your hands whilst using charcoal. Charcoal is a carbonised form of wood. Charcoal is made by heating wood to high temperatures in the absence of oxygen. Here we can see the different types of charcoal most commonly used by artists. We have willow compressed, powdered. Charcoal is also available in pencil form, which is really handy if you don't want to make any mess at all while you're using charcoal. Charcoal pencil would certainly be the way to go. And we can see to the far right, we actually have a white charcoal pencil. Now, when we pick the charcoal up, immediately we can feel the softness from it. We can see it is organic by nature. Willow charcoal doesn't have any additives in it. So let's have a look at its appearance. Very dark in color, in contrast to the compressed, it's not as dark and it's more organic in shape. It comes in sticks of about 15 centimetres and varies in diameters. Diameters can vary from 1.5 mil up to about 2.5 centimetres. The 2.5 centimetre charcoal would be regarded as jumbo. And it can also go larger from there in block form if you want to cover particularly large areas. Now a charcoal powder is made from pieces of charcoal that's just been ground down and you can easily make your own charcoal powder and I'll show you how to do that in this video. Powder is used a lot to block in large areas at once. It's got a beautiful delicacy to it. Really soft tones are achievable with, uh, with a powder. It's, it's a lovely thing to use and in fact you can mix water with it and you can actually paint with charcoal which we'll be looking at 
in a different video that could be number seven or number eight but uh, for this video uh, we'll be using it in its dry form now let's move on to the compressed as we can see immediately when you pick it up it feels a lot heavier than the willow charcoal it's a lot darker your hands really do get very dirty when you're using compressed charcoal that's why my next tip on foil wrapping the charcoal is very handy in particular for compressed charcoal compressed charcoal is not as organic by nature as the willow it's actually made of the powdered charcoal mixed with a resin or a wax or a gum and then it's put into molds so its shape is very consistent and it's generally graded into categories of softness so it comes for example extra soft soft medium hard charcoal pencils are also graded uh, into very similar categories and of course a big advantage in using the pencil form is that you do keep your hands very clean this is also what you'd use for areas in your painting where you need to get a lot of detail charcoal pencils are excellent for achieving detail and of course then we have the white pencil which is excellent for creating some highlights uh, and add a little bit more interest there in the work pencil form of course being made up of the compressed but has the added addition of a wooden jacket that stops the fingertips being in direct contact with the compressed foil wrap so let's have a look at how you'd wrap uh, your charcoal in foil the main purpose of this of course will be to protect your fingers being in direct contact with the charcoal okay here's a homemade wrap i've made myself i much prefer to make my own you can buy them already wrapped in the foil here is a bought one but it, the foil does have some kind of a gum or adhesive on it that sticks it to the charcoal and when you're trying to remove this it can be a nightmare and you can make a lot of mess uh, just trying to remove it so I always try to make my own and we can do this easily with a regular piece of aluminium foil uh, about uh, 2 by about 3.5 uh, inches would be a good size now there is a difference between a good wrap and a bad wrap this is a good wrap it's nice and tight to the charcoal there's no air gaps the aluminium foil is perfectly flat now you see we've got a nice wrap at the end there keeping everything together and you want to keep that wrap right at the bottom if you stop coming up the sides when you're working on the paper it's going to scratch the surface okay now i'm breaking this in half as willow tends to break very easily if you're standing at an easel working a full piece is okay but for smaller areas as we're doing today it's worth uh, just snapping it in half but i actually think it's better to start uh, big so let's do that it's uh, easier obviously to work bigger now so we're starting with the largest piece first. Larger pieces are easier to do than smaller pieces, especially if you're a beginner. Now being aware of the placement here of the charcoal to that the left corner there. The left corner wants to be slightly lower than the bottom of the charcoal. Of course, as we're looking at it, uh, this is the top of the charcoal, but once it's wrapped, it will be the bottom I hope that's uh, not confused you there. Now if we place the chart at that left corner in this position, that is not going to make for a good wrap. It's going to unravel and could cause you a fair bit of drama. So make sure that that left corner is above the charcoal. Now I'll draw your attention to that bottom corner there and observe the relation to the charcoal. We'd like a couple of centimetres from the top. The top of course being the bottom as we're looking at it. So let's begin the roll. Okay, so start by folding the corner under as we bring the foil up and over. 
keeping it as flat to the charcoal as we can. Now, let us observe what was that uh, left corner. Do you see the distance there? That's gonna make for a really good wrap. Now, as you're doing this, be firm as you're crumpling this uh, bottom here. Be firm, but gentle. You don't want to, uh, to cause any tears in the aluminium foil. You're just crumpling it together. Going round for a nice neat. Oh, that's a lovely wrap. <laughs> so let's do a couple more with the willow. The process is the same, of course, uh, but it is more challenging when the sticks are very thin. And uh, for extra thin sticks, uh, you'll find that is uh, quite a challenge. Okay, now I'm going to show you something here with the compressed. Because this piece of compressed is obviously uh, quite a small piece and you see if we went ahead and wrapped it now we just cover the uh, the charcoal with the foil so what we can do is just put a little fold in there to where we want the charcoal to come in relation to the uh, sorry the foil to come in relation to the charcoal there we go we've got about a centimeter clearance there so I'll go ahead roll it up And there we go. In a moment, we're going to be starting with the practical tasks. But before we do that, I'm going to quickly show you how you can make your own charcoal powder. The easiest way to do this is to use a sanding block as we have here. This is made of fine grade sandpaper. There's about 10 sheets to a block. And as each layer gets dirty, you can just peel it off. So you hold the block vertically, just rub the willow charcoal against it, and there you have some charcoal powder. You can put this in a little jar or storage container and use it whenever you need it. Like I've said, usually used if you want to fill in large areas, or if you just want that lovely, delicate softness to the work you can introduce the powder. So let's start with task one, tonal graduation. So we're picking up the willow, we're going to touch the paper, applying very light pressure and as we work down we're going to just be applying a little bit more pressure and then a little bit more and a little bit more as we move towards these darker tones and you can see we've got some lovely darts coming there now just with the willow alone. Now let's see what the compress does. So we start again very very light pressure as we come in there adding a little bit more pressure as we work down getting into some really very dark almost ebony shades there and let's just have a look at that in comparison to the darks of the willow that initially appeared quite dark but compared to the compressed it's not as dark let's have a look at the pencil now we've got a lot more control here using the pencil which makes for some really smooth transitions here in graduation but again it is the compressed inside and so you're going to be able to get those lovely dark tones. Okay, let's move on to the powder that we've just made. So we'll use a nice soft brush. And we just pick up the powder with the brush. And just touch the paper. Initially, of course, we get the darks, but just keep on going. We've got some beautiful graduation there. Look at the softness of that. It's just exquisite. It's 
So let's look at the qualities and capabilities of each type of charcoal here and the differences between them. You can clearly see the powder gives us a lighter shade followed by the willow. You can also clearly see the darkest is the compressed. And we've got some lovely mid-tones coming through there. We'll be doing more on graduation later. This is just a, a, the first task. It's the initial introduction to putting that charcoal to the paper and finding out its capabilities and observing the different qualities from the willow to the compressed to the powdered. Now, as we said, charcoal is, is quite messy to work with. And just by doing these gradual tones. So let's lift up this piece of paper and you will see the dust just fall. Now that is also powdered charcoal. So you can put that in a container and use it. Okay, on to mark making. And from here on in, I'd actually like you to try and restrict yourself to just the willow charcoal. The reason for this is I want you to have a very good understanding of its capabilities before we move on to compressed and powdered. So let's just go straight across the page there with a light pressure, followed underneath by medium pressure, and then come in, making a nice dark mark across the page. Now let's hold the willow vertically and come in again with a light mark. Then using medium pressure, now add slightly more pressure to create the darks. Now let's keep the willow quite loose between our fingers. Allow the willow to move as we're creating a nice organic line. Come in again, organic, with a little bit more pressure. Starting to create more interest here in the marks that we're making. Now again, let's hold the willow vertically and come back in and make some more organic marks. Just allowing the willow to move between your fingers feeling the softness of it, allowing it to move. Now let's hold the willow horizontally and run it across the page so we get a line that's thicker. Again let's start with light pressure, come in with more of a medium pressure and then quite a firm pressure but still allowing movement picking the willow up occasionally from the page so we can see graduation of tones. Remember, we're learning. We're absolute beginners and we're learning the capabilities and qualities of this lovely medium willow. Okay, this time as we come along, we're still keeping it horizontal but we're just applying a little bit more pressure to the tip as we allow the middle and foiled end of the charcoal just to lift up off the paper and we're coming in here quite dark quite a lot of pressure now let's come in with a thinner line so now we're applying layers and you can see the difference in tone where we put that second layer on top. You can layer and layer and layer with willow. It's simply wonderful. I'm so excited about getting into the drawing stage. But uh, let's keep it together here as we proceed through this mark making. And of course we haven't even started to blend yet. Uh, willow is so versatile, so flexible, so forgiven. I adore it, it's my favourite medium. So now let's turn the charcoal vertically and again just come across the page. 
I'm just really doing a, a recap of what we've done on the other page. So now we're coming across with some lines. We'll keep these quite uniform, quite close together and quite similar in terms of time. As we come in with the second lines, we're going to occasionally lift off the pressure just a little. Or occasionally apply more pressure, however you want to look at it. Ah, breakage. Now, this is going to happen to you a lot when you're working with willow. And this is broken halfway down, right in the foil. What's the best thing to do here? Well, we could rewrap it. But for this exercise, let's continue on. Feel the willow between our fingers as we proceed with these lines. You know, I always start off with a wrap and when I'm working with charcoal, but I very rarely end up with the wrap still intact. And in fact, if it is intact, you haven't been working hard enough. So let's come in here and we're creating now a more of an organic line. We're just letting the medium do its own thing a little bit, move around as we're observing what's happening as we're varying our degrees of pressure from light to dark. Now it is important to feel uh, the nature of the charcoal between your fingers and also because you will pick up the charcoal onto your fingers so we're going to get a little bit dirty which will lead us on to my top tip of the day, not yet uh, soon, uh, how to clean your hands uh, within a couple of seconds and uh, without washing them, without using a cloth or anything like that, without wiping them uh, with a cloth. So uh, stay tuned now. Okay, now this technique is just called scribbling. And what we're going to do is we're going to start coming in here really light. And then we're going to change to more pressure so that you can see how the dark line is appearing in front of the light line. And so as we come in here with our second practice, light to start with, and then come in different varying degrees of darks by applying different degrees of pressure to the charcoal. And we can see that now we're starting to move into the realm of moving things backwards and forwards onto the paper, which is all down to light and dark. It's one of the most important principles that you learn in drawing, especially when you're using charcoal. Light and dark, where are you putting them and why? Now this technique is called stippling. It's also known as pointillism. So what we're doing here is we're just literally touching the paper up and down And again, creating different degrees of tonal value with how we with how we're using the charcoal. Now we're putting them more close together. We're having bigger dots appear on the paper, and that's giving the illusion of darkness. To the right, we don't have as many dots; tend to be smaller in size. And so uh, the illusion there is light. Now, drawing adjacent parallel lines is called hatching. And we can do this also by varying the degree of pressure that we're putting on the charcoal. So lines that have more space between them will give you a different illusion to lines that are close together. 
So this is about the distance of the lines as well as the pressure that you're applying to it. Now, if you add another layer in a different, uh, at a different angle, this is known as gloss hatching. Now, you can use this technique again throughout using all dry medium, charcoal, pencils, pastels. lines to describe the form of the objects. Now we're going to move on to a very popular technique, one that leads itself very well to charcoal and that's tonal graduation. And we can see this is very easy to do with willow, starting with your lights and moving down to your darks. And here I'm showing you that you can get really quite dark uh, with willow. It, it's just so versatile. But of course, if we start to blend the charcoal, which we'll be having a little look at later, that will lighten the charcoal. But we won't get caught up in that just now because I'd like us to move on to the tonal scale. The tonal scale is arguably one of the most important practices that you can do uh, when you're learning to draw with this medium and any other medium for that matter. And uh, throughout all art, drawing, painting, it doesn't matter. The tonal scale is important in all areas because it's through the tonal scale that we can understand how to manipulate the marks we're making on the page, how we can manipulate the viewer's eye to perceive them as forward, backwards. This is how we move things around on the paper. Now, practicing the tonal scale is one of the most important things that you can do as an absolute beginner. And I recommend that you do this as much as you can until you are able to actually create a tonal scale. This is, these are reasonably good examples of what I'm showing you here. The idea being, of course, that we start with the lightest pressure and we gradually move into the darks. But it must be a very gradual process. This will come in when you're a little bit further down the track and you're moving more into realism and things like that. Uh, being able to execute realism is all about using tonal scale. Um, but now we are absolute beginners and your homework for this week is to produce a tonal scale. Should have 10 points to it like I've done here. The lighter sections being the high keys and the darker sections being the low keys. This will take practice. You may encounter some frustration in doing this. But remember, you are at the beginning of your journey. And if you want to get to your destination, you need to master the skill of being able to create a tonal scale. So practice, practice, practice as much as you can. And once uh, you can create a scale that looks something on the lines of these, then I'd suggest you're ready to move on uh, to the compressed charcoal. So for the rest of this video, we're going to be using the Willow Charcoal and Kneadable Eraser, which I'll touch on in a moment. I'm not going to hold your hand all the way through this small section here because I merely want you to observe where I'm putting the lights, where I'm putting the, the darkest darks and the relationship between them. What happens when I introduce 
the kneadable eraser. What happens when I start to take those layers off? Coming through to creating lighter and lighter tones. Look at the relationship. Look at what your eye is perceiving in terms of space. How am I moving things forward and moving things back? Uh, because I actually want to talk about a, a couple of other things while this small section's uh, playing. And we're a few minutes away from actually starting sketching the tree. I will be holding your hand with that, telling you exactly what I'm doing as I'm doing it in a real time, step by step. Keeping it very, very simple and just working with the willow. We don't need to have a lot of stuff. We don't need to have all these fancy materials and tools. We don't need any of that. That's not going to make you a good artist. It's not even going to give you the skills to do anything reasonable if you don't know how to use these tools properly. So uh, slow and steady wins the race. And I'll just touch briefly here on paper because you notice that I haven't even mentioned paper. And there's a reason why I've done that. Buying a load of fancy papers and paper can get very expensive. You know, you can pay $50 for a sheet of paper. Buying uh, all these fancy papers and fancy materials are not going to make you a good artist at all. In fact, they'll probably slow the learning process because when you buy an expensive paper and expensive materials, it, it can have a real sense of intimidation because you've parted with a monetary uh, amount. Now you're going to expect more from yourself. Now I've got all these wonderful things, the top, top of the range paper, top of the range materials. Now I'll be able to do some beautiful drawing. No, that's not the case. Practice is going to enable you to produce a beautiful drawing. Not, not uh, expensive materials and fancy stuff. So you don't need all that stuff because you are a beginner. So allow yourself to learn, okay? You're an absolute beginner, and so you have your L plates on right now. Be proud to wear them, knowing that you're on a journey. And being able to learning the fundamental skills of drawing with charcoal or any other medium, it is a journey. And I know there's a big push on YouTube at the moment to trace and all this kind of stuff, and and that it's not about you know your journey. You know, it's not about the process. It's about the finished result. I disagree with that. Uh, it is about your journey, and drawing is, is about your journey, in particular charcoal. So when we're talking about uh, an eraser, and again you can use this uh, kind of eraser, with all dry medium, with your charcoal, with your pencil, with your pastel, it's the best tool to use with dry medium. Lovely to use, you can mould it to any shape, it's self-cleaning, so when it does get covered in charcoal, all you do is you just keep folding it into each other. So, what are you actually going to be drawing on if we're not talking about paper? Well, drawing anything that you... Look, I'm sure that most of you would have a sketch pad and a stick of charcoal, simply because you're watching this video. I'm assuming that you have uh, some kind of interest in it. If you've just stumbled across the video and you're finding it quite informative, then do these exercises with anything at all that you have. Use a pencil, use a stick of kids chalk, use a pen, use anything you have. The principles are, are the same. So whilst we're not getting caught up on paper right now, I will briefly touch on it just for a minute here. 
Uh, so paper is graded into weight categories. Okay, so you can buy paper, say 110 gram paper or 150 gram paper, 400 gram paper. What that's telling you is the lower the number, thinner the paper, the higher the number, the thicker the paper. If it's thicker paper, if it's a 400 gram, it's going to have a fair amount of tooth to it. Uh, which That's the texture we're talking about of a paper. A uh, 100 gram paper, for example, would tend to be smoother uh, than a 400 gram paper, uh, depending. But again, you know, we don't want to get into this whole paper thing, you know. I know that uh, watercolour paper, yes, it's available in smooth and it's available rough and it can both be 400 grams. So that's what I'm saying. It's it's a technical, it gets quite technical when you're talking about papers and that is a whole new video, I mean, within itself. You don't need to know any of that at all. And again, my advice is don't even think about that stuff. Get whatever you've got. Get an old docket, an envelope, a paper plate, anything you have at all, and practice on that. If you do have a sketchbook, then clearly you need to be doing all the exercises that I'm giving you here in that sketchbook. Now it's time for our top tip. So we've had our fingers in the charcoal, we've got them dirty, which is inevitable when you're working with charcoal. What do you do? You simply pick up your eraser, knead your fingers with it, and the charcoal will come off. Just fold the kneadable eraser into itself and it'll come off like new. This is what a knead double eraser looks like when you buy it. It's in a plastic wrap, take it off. But then I usually divide it in half. I use half for the drawing and then I use half to clean my hands with throughout the process. As you have natural oil on your fingertips, this can get on the charcoal and the eraser, particularly if you're blending. I'll speak more of that later. And you don't want that oil contaminating the charcoal or the eraser. So that's why I keep it separate. You can buy them in the little container and these are really handy. Okay, so here's a regular sketch pad. Let's open it and get started. I'm right handed, so I'm gonna come straight in there on the left side and establish some darks early on. We won't be getting caught up too much with lighting in this video, but let's just say the light's coming from the left. Let's pop a couple of branches in. We'll pop one on the left, one on the right to start with. So that'll give us a little bit of balance, something to work with. And as we're working with willow charcoal, let's draw a willow tree. So you'll notice that we're looking to place all of the big shapes first, and we're gonna get all that down before we concern ourselves with detail in any way. The drawing's at its very beginning stage, it's constantly evolving, and we don't need to worry if we put the branches in the wrong place, like I have with these couple here at the top, because we're gonna be moving things around. That's the beauty of charcoal, and that's why it's perfect for beginners, because it's so forgiving. So let's come in there with a few more darks on that bottom left, and then come in here starting to establish a little bit of form. Now you can see there I'm just wisping my finger over the charcoal, a little bit of a blend. 
So you can see the different in textures here with the smoothness of that blend versus the textural qualities of the untouched willow. Be kind to yourself, don't put yourself under any pressure. Allow yourself to learn, but most of all, enjoy it. When you really enjoy it and you really get into that zone and you're playing with it and you're actually having fun, that's when you're learning the most. Okay, and that's, you know, that's really the best advice uh, I can give you. So let's come into view with your eraser and we'll just start tidying up a few things here, getting rid of anything that we feel at this stage isn't in the right place. One of the best tools that you can use with charcoal and if you're choosing between which erasers to buy, if you had to choose one, you'd go with this one. And you'll probably come to view your eraser like an old friend, as I do. What I mean by that is, it's always there, we have lots of fun together, that it will always be there for you and help get you out, no doubt, of many tricky situations. Now let's come in here and start putting some uh, thinner branches on and I'm using a nice gentle grip on this, not a great deal of control to do this. So I'm creating those lovely organic marks that we were making earlier when we were practicing. I'm implementing those now. Now let's just add a little bit more interest to the trunk on this left side and we'll put a, a branch here. Making this up as I go along, constantly working all parts of the drawing to keep the composition nice and balanced. Trust your instincts when you're looking at placement. Put it wherever your instinct is telling you to go. And if you don't get it right, simply come across with the finger, wipe the mark away and simply come in with another one. Come back to the top, place a couple of more thinner branches. Getting thinner, of course, as the branch tapers to the end. We're not concerning ourselves with the leaves because this willow is deciduous. Now you can see that they're starting to, to get a real flow for this now, these marks. The charcoal is still, the willow is still quite loose in my fingers and all I'm doing here is just giving the willow guidance but the willow is making the mark that beautiful exquisite interesting mark you know and drawing uh, is it's a team effort and I expect the paper to do some work the willow the eraser you know uh, all I'm doing is is directing but, but uh, you must allow the materials uh, to come forth and do what they do best. And it's just simply lovely. Look at that, just coming in with the finger there. At any time, you can just come across with the finger to blend or apply a little bit more pressure to the finger and just totally get rid of the mark. That's why charcoal is perfect for beginners because it's so forgiving. It's simply lovely to work with. And remember, if you don't have a sketch pad right now, but I've inspired you and you want to start things moving, cardboard's actually quite good to draw on. I used to, <laughs> I used to practice on cardboard all of the time. Any box I used to get, I, before I would throw the box away, I would draw in it. And here's a good example of this, of a drawing that I've done. And this is just a, an old piece of cardboard that I was going to throw away. So why not draw in it first? And in actual fact, the, the, the black that you see as the background here is actually charcoal paint that I've used to do that. And then we cut, and then of course the, the dress is, is a lot of the charcoal paint coming through. But there is compressed on here, there's a little bit of willow in places. And of course, then we do have the color, which is the pastel. But I'm throwing this in here just to show you that this is just cardboard, that's all it is. And I think, you know, it's a reasonable drawing. 
when you're thinking of drawing on cardboard of course don't get the really corrugated type uh, because as you draw on that with the charcoal you will get those lines coming through so uh, but it, you know when I smooth actually in this drawing it is on corrugated but because I've prepared it a little bit and and I was uh, the drawing was all about just the dress really trying to uh, capture that dress so this is a reference uh, from a magazine uh, so all I wanted to do was just create the flowers on the dress. That was the point of it. And so because that's patterned, uh, that's automatically going to take the eye away from uh, the corrugated stripes. Uh, so just be mindful of that if you are going to experiment with, with cardboard, uh, you know, so that you're not becoming frustrated with the lines. Keep it simple. Now you can see I'm getting a bit lost here, uh, in and out of the right brain. What's working, what's not? That's definitely not working. Let's see if a different angle will help. Uh, and this is, you know, this is how we go. Uh, middle stage can be uh, frustrating. But uh, you stay with it. Uh, and that's a good tip as well. Always try to get to the end of a drawing. Always try to resolve it. Uh, you'll notice in the uh, example I've just given you on the cardboard, the hand wasn't resolved, you know. Uh, but so always try to, to resolve things as you go. For the next two weeks every time you do a drawing the tonal scale comes first and your first tonal scales will be questionable that's because you're a learner allow yourself to learn each tonal scale you do will be better than the last that's all you can hope for And of course, subscribe to my channel. This is, like I've said, a 10 week course. This is week number one. All other lessons will be jam packed, full of useful information for you. So let's come in here, working up the left side a little bit. Remembering we're going to keep it lighter in tone. Now let's put in some curved hatching. Remember what we did earlier. Does it work? Probably not. Come in with a finger and then come back in with a charcoal. Bit of it a little bit there. Maybe come in with just a little flick up there. What what illusion does that give us? All the time, back and forth. A bit more curved hatching. Do you see how that's describing the form? Giving the illusion of a form of the roundness of that trunk. Is it helping? Is it allowing the tree to come forth? Are we perceiving it as being more round if I do this? And this is what drawing's all about. When I'm going in, getting it right, it's a lovely mark. That's really when you're working in the creative side of the brain, when you're getting marks that are just beautiful like that. you can see that in a drawing you can tell when when somebody's in that creative mode and it's just in full flow it's a wonderful feeling we can liken this to uh, the childlike state of you know when it when a child's at play when you 
observing the child truly at play, being 100% engrossed in what they're doing, living in the moment and enjoying every moment of it. You know, and you can say to the child, ah, little Amber, your dinner is ready. And she may not uh, respond. And you may think, well, the child is ignoring me. Uh, but no, they're just in the creativity uh, state of mind. This is exactly the same for an artist. And in fact, when you're truly engrossed in a drawing and it's going really well, a lot of time can pass. You know, you'll think, oh, I'll just draw for an hour before you know it. You've been there for two hours. Oh, my God, you know, where's the time gone? You just to you're just not conscious of all, all that time going. And, of course, not conscious of somebody talking in the background or or noise. Uh, you're just not aware of this. You know, brings us back to the child that you think's ignoring you. You know, it's just uh, not so. Well, that's like a creative mode. It's actually, I believe, using the right side of your brain. And you can see here, I'm looking quite lost in this drawing now. This is because I keep coming in and out of using the left analytical side of the brain and the right creativity side of the brain. And you can see this is evident in the marks I'm making. Uh, but we won't dwell on that too much. That's uh, for another video. Here we can see a regular sketch pad. This would be about 110 grams. Paper is graded in weights. So for example, 110 gram, what we're looking at here, just a regular paper in any sketchbook. And that is perfectly adequate for beginners. And that's definitely what I recommend you do. You keep it very, very simple. Have a couple of sticks of charcoal, your kneadable eraser, and a regular sketch pad or whatever you have and just start practicing that's all you need to do at this stage you don't need to think about anything else certainly not a, a, a load of fancy papers okay so let's get it together here let's make a decision on this top branch let's place it where we think it should be and stay with it at this point we've we've moved it around a little bit so let's let's place it remembering your homework for this week which is the tonal scale okay so I am assuming that if you're watching this video and you are serious about learning, you will be doing your best and practicing as much as you can to achieve a reasonably good tonal scale. When I was studying for my degree many moons ago now, I sometimes wish that I'd had access back then uh, to the kind of information that you've got. You know, when I was studying for my degree, you know, you just pretty much had the lecturers and some were better than others. Blending with your fingers is something I encourage beginners to do because this is how you really get a feel for the medium but when you blend it's it's a perfectly okay to blend when you've got freshly washed hands when your hands are nice and clean and you don't have much perspiration on your hands naturally your fingers have natural oils in them and if you have a lot of perspiration on your fingertips and you touch the charcoal it can leave an imprint there so when you hear 
I know some people think I'll oh, never blend uh, with your fingertip you know you just must never do this well that's just not the case and you can do it and you should do it as a, as a beginner so that you know what happens when you do blend with your fingers so you know how the charcoal reacts to that and we'll be covering a lot of the things I'm generalizing about in the subsequent videos uh, in this 10 week course but we're starting as absolute beginners and we're taking it really slow. We're allowing ourselves to learn. We're in the middle stage. This is a very exciting stage because we've warmed up through the earlier stages. And before you start a drawing, it's good practice to get a scrap piece of paper, and make some marks on it. Get things moving. Do your tonal scale. Very important. You should be doing a tonal scale before every drawing what you should be doing so that you totally understand it and you can do it with absolute ease. That's when you know you're getting somewhere. Now I'm struggling a bit here coming into this right side of the brain the creativity side and coming out to do the camera and things and uh i'm going back into my, the left side of my brain we'll, we'll touch on that later uh drawing on the the kind of right side of the brain as it were uh, but i don't want to get caught up in that now as we can see in this tree it's starting to get too top heavy we need to widen the tree at the bottom let's start coming in widening the tree bringing in some interesting marks creating a little bit of balance within the tonal values when you're working at a table like i am today and you're working very close to the drawing it's sometimes easy to get too caught up in the drawing and not see the big picture as it were This is why working at an easel is wonderful, especially with charcoal, because then uh, the dust has a little bit of a runoff as well. Uh, but also, uh, the most benefit is that you can stand back from the easel. Uh, and this is very important, uh, so that you don't get too caught up in your drawing. You must always stand back at a regular basis. And by doing this, you'll see, that, see things uh, quite easily you'll be able to see things that you actually couldn't see when you were too close to the drawing. Now at this stage, we could call the drawing done. We've done pretty much what we wanted to do. Uh, but I'm going to introduce some grass here at the front. Uh, so we can show you what happens now as I apply more of a mid-tone, come in with the eraser uh, to produce uh, some grass, which so the eraser is going to be added some lovely textural qualities to the front and um, let's see what happens uh, so like i say we're drawing from the imagination this is excellent practice uh, if you are drawing from the imagination getting frustrated then yes use a reference but try to um, draw from the imagination first now if now if you're using my tree uh, as a reference don't judge your tree to my tree. There's no judgments here. Your tree is uniquely yours, the same as my tree is uniquely mine. And if I tried to draw this tree again, I could never draw it exactly the same as what I have done. And so appreciate it for what it is. But it's a reasonable study. willow of course coming from the twigs and branches of a willow when willows harvested it's cut into rods these rods are then boiled and stripped of the bark the rods are then placed into tins and put in the kiln 
to begin the carbonization process. And we'll just touch on that in a moment, as you can get willow charcoal, but you can also get uh, vine charcoal. And I know this is often grouped together as it's as if it's the same thing, but it's actually not. Willow, of course, being made from the twigs and branches of the willow, and the vine charcoal being made from the grapevine. The process for manufacture is very similar. That's why it's often grouped together. But there is slight subtle differences between them. Just slight tone graduations and uh, the degree of brittleness as well. But if you can get yourself a stick of willow, uh, that's a really good starting point. So the best way forward from here is to get a couple of sticks of charcoal, willow charcoal, and a kneadable eraser, and a sketch pad. And with those three things, if you practice using the willow with the kneadable eraser, you will build up a good understanding of the capabilities, depending, of course, on how much you practice. Get as much practice in as you can. So here we are coming in with a kneadable eraser into this lovely mid-tone, and we're creating some texture, creating some grass just by introducing little clumps of grass here and there with different degrees of tone. So we're using the eraser in a similar way to the willow in that we're varying our pressure on the eraser in different areas so that we're creating slightly lighter tones in some areas and so on. Certainly the next two lessons, all you will need is a stick of willow charcoal and an eraser and any surface to draw on. The willow sticks can be available individually, but they generally come in little bundles, little packets or boxed, usually with around 10 sticks in them. So let's briefly look here at some other tools that are commonly used with charcoal. So when you're looking at erasers, your, your options are kneadable eraser, block eraser. The blocks come in handy for being able to remove large areas of charcoal. We have the pencil eraser for obviously doing more detailed work. There's a battery eraser that you can actually get two different eraser sizes to put in here, uh, a thinner one and a thicker one. In terms of blending, here are some options for you. We have blending stamps. These are available in lots of different sizes. We have three sizes here. And here we have some tissue paper. You can blend quite easily uh, with some tissue paper. Alternatively, you could use a chamois. And brushes. Sable brushes uh, are good. Longevity brushes are lovely to blend with. But when you're talking about any of those blending tools, they will all remove a certain amount of charcoal from the surface. So when you've got your charcoal uh, down on the paper, you start to blend it, it's going to get lighter in tone. 
If you have enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, which is a nice way of saying thanks for the upload. And of course, subscribe. And if you know somebody that will benefit from the information in this video, uh, please share it with them. I'd like to thank each and every one of you for watching this video today. If you're going to stay with me for the 10 week course, please ensure that you do the tonal scale as your homework for this week. And I'll be here next Friday with another video, more information to help you along your journey.